Welcome back to Budgetcraft PC everyone. Today we're going to be unboxing all of my motherboard components with the exception of my NVMe SSD. I'm going to be pulling that from my old PC and here we go. So today we are going to be using in this build the Gigabyte Aorus Z890. It's the Wi-Fi Elite. And yes, we are using the Intel Core Ultra. This one here. And we're using the i7 26.5kf. Decided to go with this one because it'll be a huge upgrade from what I'm currently using, which is a 12th gen i5. And I think this will be a good balance between gaming and video editing and making videos for you guys. So that's why I went with this one. And then for our memory, we are going with the T-Force Vulcan DDR5. It is 32 gigs, so two 16 gig sticks at 64 100 megahertz transfer rate. I currently use the DDR4 version of this in my current build and I have zero complaints with it. It's been really, really good. So, take a look at that in a minute. And then also for this one, we are going to be installing a contact frame. Um, I just thought it'd be kind of unique, different thing to do than just using the frame that's already on this motherboard itself. So I decided to pick up one of these, it's like six bucks, just to give it a shot, make sure it can stay nice and cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the motherboard itself. Before we talk about the motherboard itself, let's take a look what comes in the box. We've got our Wi-Fi antenna that is magnetic, so that's kind of nice. Then but we got some cable in here. I'll have to read the manual, see exactly what that's all about. And We got some other kind of connector here. We'll have to read our installation guide and see what that's all about. Oh. Motherboard installation guide. This will tell you how to basically put everything together. How to put in your Intel socket here. This looks like a very generic guide because again I gave you this with the uh, showing you AMD stuff but might have to pull the manual off the on online just some more literature good luck I'm gonna put this back in here The best thing to do whenever you're building with your mini board, get out of the case, is put this off to the side for now and close up your motherboard box. And now this makes a fantastic surface to build on. But for today, we're going to be using it as a surface to take a deeper look at this motherboard. Pull it all out here. Set it down there for you. Let's 
All right, so your CPU goes right here. It's a good thing to see that cover still there, so the pins underneath aren't going to be damaged. This is the retention bracket here. So you open that up, pull it up there, and your CPU will sit there. And on the motherboard itself, there's an arrow right here on this side. And that's where you line up your CPU to know what orientation needs to go in. You just simply put that back down. We'll do that. Your RAM will go here. And most motherboards, at least the ones that I've worked with, which are both in gigabytes, then on the motherboard itself, right here, which may be a little hard for you guys to see, it will actually tell you what slots to fill for your RAM. So this one says it should be this slot and this slot. open those up for future Josh. This is where our 24 pin connector will come in. We got a fan pump here, CPU optional, CPU fan, a three pin RGB. Looks like we got troubleshooting LEDs here. We can reset here and power on from the motherboard itself. Over here we've got our front panel header and some speakers. It's kind of cool. We have to figure out how to work that off. We got our SATA connectors here. Looks like we have maybe USB. This is a HDMI right there. So maybe we can put in a screen inside the case at one point. We got two USB headers here. System temperature sensor it looks like. And then all of our RGB headers. And then our audio. And yeah, so this button here, once we get our graphics card put in, we can push the button there to remove it. And our SSD will go under here. Our SSD will go right here. We'll have to take that off. It's got thermal pads here and thermal pads here to keep that nice and cool. And everything on this case is, or on this motherboard is uh, toolless it looks like, which is kind of cool. We'll go ahead and set that back down in there. This one here, where we can fit three more SSDs. And we got two more PCIe slots down here. So, take a look at the back of the motherboard. Actually, stop right here. Let's take a look at all of our connections. So we have our USB here. We have a BIOS 3.2 USB, another 3.2 USB header here. Display port, Thunderbolt connection, another USB 3.2, two more there. 2.5 gig network. We have our Wi-Fi connection, mic out, line out, and optical audio out. On the back side here, we have some uh, really nice feature here to help support some of the bigger motherboard or bigger graphics cards. They have a plate back there, which will be this plate here, helps support the weight of the graphics card. And then we got a nice plate there when we go to do the uh, Contact frame. We'll have to make sure that that plate stays in. Other than that, it looks pretty nice, pretty clean. It 
definitely has some pretty good VRM heat sinks here, so should be very nice with all the fans that we're going to throw on this guy. Dusty there. And it does have an included IO shield already installed, which is nice. I like when the motherboards do that because it makes install a lot nicer. But yeah. It's a real nice dark board. It'll fit nicely with the black bands and everything like that. I won't be assembling this right now. This is just to kind of give you guys a nice little overview.